in celebration of the release of Heel Caesar, the Coen Brothers' next cinematic directorial effort, there's no better way to appreciate Joel and Ethan Coen than looking at the top 10 Coen Brothers films. If you saw my last video on Fargo Season 2, you'll notice how I praised the show for staying faithful to the Coen Brother formula, and as two of my favourite filmmakers, I'm always looking for an opportunity to praise them even more. Now, please bear in mind that this is my own personal opinionated list, which I hold very dear to me. So if you disagree, make sure to share your own list in the comments below, because there are quite a few films I'm inevitably going to leave out. Number 10. The Man Who Wasn't There Taking on a very traditional 1940s American style and stripping away the sense of harmony in favour of a black and white noir tone, The Man Who Wasn't There is a film about loneliness and alienation. The brilliant Billy Bob Thornton plays a monotone, quiet barber looking to take on a business venture into a new, innovative, revolutionary technology known as dry cleaning, but in the process gets caught up in a love affair, embezzlement and even murder. It's a film that starts casually and moves at a relaxed pace, but once Thornton's actions commence, quickly do events spiral out of control in a Coen brother fashion. For me personally, it's not the most enlightening film on this list, but there's something about its cool and sophisticated style that's kept it intriguing over the years. Number 9. Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Oh Brother Where Art Thou is a reflection of the American folk movement of the early 1900s, placing three escaped convicts on a quest to recover a lost treasure during the Great Depression of 1930s Mississippi. It's loosely based on Homer's Odyssey, a poem about Odysseus' journey home following the fall of Troy. Jeez, how did you not know that just by looking at the film? <laughs> it is steeped in metaphors and complex ideas, but much of the film's enjoyment and comedy is based on the chemistry between the three uh, heroes as they encounter strange and interesting people along their journey. Number 8. A Serious Man This is certainly, in my opinion, to be one of the Coen's most profound and enlightening films. A Serious Man is a very subdued, subtle and thought-provoking movie with heavy existential themes. As Jewish filmmakers, the Coens focus on the concept of life's great misunderstanding. Larry is a physics professor whose week just gets progressively worse as his wife wants a divorce, his son starts using drugs, and his seemingly innocuous existence is called to question in this rather tender and honest tale. I think I do little justice in describing its hidden brilliance, but I do however strongly recommend watching the Nerdwriter's incredible breakdown of the core concepts. I've left a link in the description. Number 7. Raising Arizona This may not be the most visually striking or emotionally profound Coen Brother film, but Raising Arizona is definitely one of the best slapstick comedies of the 1980s. Son, you got a panty on your head. Fast. This was only the Coen's second directorial effort, and coming off the brooding dark thriller Blood Simple, they wanted to go with something a little more lighthearted. Raising Arizona is like the side story to the oddball characters you meet in later Coen Brother films. Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter steal a baby from a rich family, and from there all hell ensues as the characters get caught up in a series of events that continually escalate. It still has all the classic dark elements of the Coen style, but it's certainly a much more brighter and upbeat film to relax to. Number 6. No Country for Old Men With its Best Picture Oscar, No Country for Old Men is truly faithful to Cormac McCarthy's enriching novel, and even goes as far as to add its own level of originality. It's a very dry and desolate film, not just in its setting, but also in its emotion. In one of Javier Bardem's greatest performances, he plays a frightening violent killer called Anton, who relentlessly stalks Josh Brolin's Llewellyn, a man caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time, and ends up on the run with $2 million in drug money. It's a very brutal tale that is carried by the concept of inevitability, the idea that death is coming and is an unstoppable force, something which Leon Thomas explains wonderfully in his own analysis, link in the description. It's a very unsettling and cruel film if you look at it through cynical eyes. There isn't much in the way of positivity in the film, bar the fact that it's one of the best neo-westerns in contemporary cinema. Number 5. True Grit I actually have a bit of a personal story about how I ended up watching True Grit with my dad in a relatively busy screen back in February of 2011. This was before I was a lover of film in the same way that I am today, but back then I was due to go in for intensive surgery the following day, and to get the prospect of it out of my mind, my dad and I thought a good old western would do the trick. How wrong we were, especially if you know how things in the film end up. 
True Grit, however, was a very moving and enjoyable western upon reflection following surgery. In fact, it's one of the best westerns in recent memory. The book was great, but like No Country for Old Men, the Coens just add that little bit extra. Everything in the book is in the movie, but the Coens also inject their own cynical philosophy, and manage to pull you into a surprisingly emotional and tense manhunt, with some very haunting pieces of cinematography that have lived with me ever since. Number 4. Burn After Reading Burn After Reading is perhaps the most underrated movie I have ever seen. All I really want to say is that it's a film about miscommunication. It has an extremely interesting and engaging story, and its very spontaneous unpredictability is great at catching you off guard on more than one occasion. It's filled with energetic performances and the dialogue is brilliantly sharp, with Brad Pitt's Chad and Frances McDormand's Linda being way in over their head at attempting to blackmail disgruntled former CIA agent Osborne Cox, played by John Malkovich. It's a Coen Brother film you're better to just jump into and the less said the better, because it's that one movie that you'll walk away from pondering over what just happened. Number 3. Inside Luann Davis Like True Grit, I hold Inside Luann Davis rather close to me because it revitalised my love for film following a long stint with depression in 2013. It's definitely not a film to get you out of depression, but it is a rather captivating and honest portrayal of making your dream job a reality. In a truly underrated performance from Oscar Isaac, we follow a frustrated musician travelling around America in the hopes that one day he can achieve his big break in a saturated industry. He's not the most likeable guy, but his desperation is empathetic indeed. Hey look, I'm happy for the gig, but who, who wrote this? I did. Despite the film's very cold and depressing tone, it doesn't hit you with negativity more so than gradually show you that no matter what life throws at you, you just have to get up and keep going. Number 2. Fargo It's expected that this would be my number 1, but out of respect for being too predictable, Fargo is a clear runner-up. I love Fargo for a magnitude of reasons, least of which it's perhaps the greatest screenplay ever written. This cemented the Coens as two of the finest filmmakers in Hollywood. William H. Macy's naive salesman Jerry has his wife kidnapped by Peter Stormare and Steve Buscemi's Carl and Gear in order to attain ransom money from Jerry's wealthy father-in-law. In between this, Gear ends up killing a cop and an innocent couple and from there the chaos ensues. It's a very rich and effective story, carried by incredible characters with their own unique personalities especially Frances McDormand's Oscar-winning performance. If you think the FX show is great, you're doing yourself a massive disservice by not indulging on the Coen's brilliantly original dark comedy. Number 1. The Big Lebowski Honestly, The Big Lebowski is one of the Coen's arguably weaker films in comparison to their other classics, but there is something about it that has me coming back constantly. I've watched this film more times than I care to admit. It's the definition of a cult classic, with Jeff Bridges playing the casual, relaxed dude hey, hey, careful, man. There's a beverage here. and John Goodman playing the uptight, short-tempered Vietnam veteran Walter This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass! as they go in search of dude's missing rug. Well, there's a bit more to it than that. What starts as a very effortless quest to find his rug turns into a kidnapping conspiracy. It's ironically the opposite of Fargo, which was the Coen's previous film, incidentally. Instead of a complex narrative, The Big Lebowski sets up what is potentially a deep and interesting story only to never fulfil that desire. It's a film infused with procrastination, laziness and self-indulgence. Dude never has a motive to drive the story forward, but instead the story comes to him. He ends up involved in a conspiracy that is blown out of proportions when, in fact, the dude is simply caught up in mistaken identity. The film is curiously more intriguing for what is going on in the background than what we are actually seeing in the foreground. The characters are aware of the dramatic events that are unfolding, but are ignorantly refusing to do anything about them. I will be doing a video somewhere down the line on this, so please stay tuned for that, unless you request it heavily, in which case I'll get right to it. It's a film with themes and political ideas scattered throughout, so don't misconstrue it as being meaningless. It's actually a very funny and engaging film that plays on our expectations as to what we should be watching rather than what we are watching. 
Hi guys, thanks for watching this little bonus video. Please remember to share your own list and thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please do hit that little subscribe button because it helps the channel out greatly and we have a new video every Thursday. Uh, next week we're talking about The Walking Dead, so stay tuned for that. And if you happen to be on Twitter, uh, you can also find me here. Until then guys, stay safe and I'll see you all very soon.